Yik Yak is basically a Facebook without a name. A social media platform that so many people use to air out so much dirty laundry. Start drama for no reason. You need to rant about something. You can just do it anonymously. It's just a place for people to say things that they don't want to say in person. People feel like they can say anything because nobody knows who's saying it. I feel like you can bring out like certain things that are going around on campus. Kind of put whatever you want out there and then people can upvote it and then downvote it if they don't like it where you can send whatever you want and it's like in a radius of like, I don't even know, of Olivet pretty much. Anytime we can communicate anonymously, our behavior usually gets exaggerated. A very easy example of this is road rage. Typically when you're in your car, you feel a sense of protection, of anonymity, and you might honk a horn at somebody or flip them off or something like that for doing something you don't like. That's kind of an expression of anonymity. Uh, that's what we would do if we knew we couldn't get caught. Analogous to that is if we were going through a grocery store and we're pushing our cart and somebody bumps into us, we don't flip them off, we don't yell at them. If someone cuts in front of us, we're, we, we don't scream at them necessarily. I mean, some people might, but not at the same rate that we have road rage because there's not that same level of anonymity at the grocery store. I've never had somebody tell me something positive about the Yik Yak app. Um, every time that's brought to our attention, it's because students feel like they're being bullied or harassed or inappropriate things have been posted on there. So Yik Yak, from my perspective, is a social media platform that um, helps people remain anonymous and so they have a level of freedom to say what they want to say uh, without really fearing repercussions or uh, accountability. I think there's some sector of Yik Yak that feels um, some anonymous support because of some of the things that they post about not um, really being their best self right now, um, struggling with depression, things like that, and I think they're looking for um, some support and some feedback. But there's a larger part of Yik Yak users that um, can be pretty negative, and so those students that are impacted by some of those comments struggle with the mental health, with the, their perception from their peers. I started getting targeted right when the app first came out. It didn't take very long um, for people to start using my name on there. It was a new app, so everyone was talking about it, but they kept using my name on there. They wanted to try and keep me off, but uh, it was pretty quick after it became popular that I was getting talked about on there. Not being able to know who posts it and having it be anonymous is a little bit hard because you don't know who your true friends are. You don't know if people that you're sitting and eating lunch with are commenting rude things about you. When they targeted me originally, it kind of hurt, but once the initial like shock wore off that they like people were talking about me, I just had to sit back and laugh because it didn't really hurt as much as they intended it to. It didn't. I didn't let it get to me because they just were bored and had nothing better to do than tear me down. We tend to protect ourselves and one of the things that we do is we underestimate emotion. So we tend to think in terms of, you know, is something going to be helpful or hurtful to me, but we don't always think about, you know, what the long lasting impact of it's going to be. It's a protective factor. We don't want to feel emotion. We don't want to feel the burden of long-term emotion. So we just kind of think that it's not going to be a big deal or that we'll somehow work through it in the future. So it's almost like procrastinating where, oh, I'm not going to feel this way now. And if I feel in the future, I'll deal with it. But we don't ever deal with it so effectively. And what's worse is that the feeling that you've not dealt with doesn't get any easier to deal with in the future just because time has passed. I decided not really to continue out with the people that I was because I did find out a couple times that some of my friends were at part. They weren't the ones posting it, but they knew about people posting stuff about me that they didn't tell me about. I quit my sports teams. Just didn't really feel like being out with them. And then I ended up actually not going to class for a little while there. 
just because I didn't want to be seen out in public. Everyone that isn't in the same headspace to deal with it in a calm manner, because not everyone can handle being talked about and not knowing who's talking about them, because it can spread like wildfire. We're a small campus. It could really bother some people's reputation, and it could bother their own mental state. I know a lot of people that suffer from like depression, anxiety, and that kind of stuff. And it is a big issue nowadays. And a lot of people will take that stuff to heart that is set on the app that's anonymous because they don't know who it's coming from. You know, it can increase suicidal ideation. It can increase the sense of isolation. It increases depression. It um, increases issues around body image and eating disorders and um, the sense of where they fit in and whether or not they fit in. Um, if there's ever been a time that making someone else feel worse has actually made someone feel better, I'd like to know about it because it just doesn't work that way. People can say bad things what they want to, but when things are just really awful, then it doesn't matter how long a post is up. If it's targeted for somebody like within a five mile radius, if people are on at Olivet College, you put a post up, if it gets taken down in five minutes, people know about it. It's screenshotted, whatever it is, people know. has raised the tensions for sure. I remember last year I was at lunch. I was laughing about some random joke and this dude comes up to me and he's like, what you laughing at? And I was like, what? And he's like, you got yik yak? I was like, no, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, okay, my bad, and walked away. Bullying, insulting each other, insulting groups of people, hate speech, I see a lot of those. Like that, social media that is purely anonymous where you could hide behind a screen name. Um, that can be very, it can be very hurtful to people. That there can be problems, because most people who are going to go on to something like that, who want to say nice things, wouldn't have a problem saying that anywhere. And they might say it somewhere else. They won't look to an anonymous source um, or an anonymous outlet. But if somebody is going to be on something like um, a Yik Yak, for example, where there is pure anonymity and, um, and there's very little recourse for bad behavior, they're typically going to express that bad behavior. They may even seek out the outlet to express bad behavior. And with that comes the likelihood that somebody is going to say something that they th that is inappropriate, that's hurtful, or just really awful. And there's very little recourse for that on some of these sites. Like, you know, maybe they'll have their post taken down, but there's nothing stopping them from reposting. Uh, they may have an account, um, they may have an account taken down, but you can always get a new account. But when people want to say things because they're anonymous, it's usually because these are things that they know that if they said in public, they wouldn't be well received. Um, and that's why anonymity can be problematic because it's, it's in cases where it's used this way, it's reserved for the nastiest of notions that we have. With something like Yik Yak, part of what they, what they promote on their website is, here's how to stay safe if you feel cyber bullied. Here's where to go if you need a break from our app because you know there are things out there you don't wanna see. That's a big red flag. If you have to have a whole section on your website dedicated to mental wellness because of using your app, that's problematic. Um, it, it's a moral issue. I, I, and, and of course you can't impose morality on people, especially uh, you know big apps like this that are designed for free speech and everything. But at some point there needs to be responsibility on the app developers to say, wait a second, if we have to protect people's mental health because of them using our app, maybe we have an app that shouldn't be used. Now, of course, you can't just say that because you can't impose morality on people, so that's kind of like a personal opinion of mine. Um, but having worked with people who have been bullied, who uh, who contemplated suicidality from using these kinds of things, that's certainly something that you consider and needs to be a part of the conversation with apps like that, that want to maintain anonymity and having kind of like this illusion that you're protecting people.
system. Biggest thing is is to understand the hurt that can be caused by words and uh, these actions, and the fact that just because they think it only affects them, it doesn't affect the community as a whole. Some people use it for good things, but in large, it seems to be used more for negative things. Posting, you know, who's going to have the parties this weekend that aren't supposed to be happening, up to uh, setting up fights uh, on campus and off campus, or just talking down or talking about people. Bullying to a point can become a crime. Uh, we try to keep things on campus and deal with it. Uh, we've had several investigations uh, come out of it, uh, taken time away from us and trying to uh, figure out how to get justice for people when the things being said about them are posted anonymously, which is kind of difficult. First of all, there's a law against cyberbullying. Um, if you make threats or intimidate someone over the internet, that is considered cyberbullying and that's a misdemeanor according to Michigan law. It does not address emotional um, problems with cyberbullying. And you know, as well as I do, that people can bully over the internet, but the law does not address that. What the Michigan law addresses is strictly threats and intimidation over the internet. However, if it happens here at Olivet College, uh, it falls under the compact for uncompact-like behavior. We support the students by listening to their concerns, and then if there's been a violation of the student handbook, uh, then we would start an investigation on their behalf. Specifically, I want everybody to know that we have no intent to limit free speech. We just want students to be compact-like and uh, support each other in positive ways. Well, unfortunately, I, you know, I've seen, I've seen it used as a good tool um, where they can communicate things, and, and I've just seen it where it's just been used as a, as a horrible tool to um, do horrible things to individuals and really try and wreak havoc on their lives here. You know, what, what can we do about this? Again, it's here at Olivet College, it's under the compact, and what you do matters. If you're using the internet to bully someone, um, you know, we'll take a look at that and um, we'll see what we can do about that. If it violates the compact, um, then we'll submit it for that. Because it's very gossip based and people want to do those types of things, when people participate in those actions, that's what allows it to grow and become more popular. So less attention or less time spent on that app um, would be helpful. You know, this campus is a small enough campus that the potential to have a really close network of people that can um, support each other really through the rest of your lives, through career opportunities and advancements. The opportunities are huge. The, the social change, the community, the support, the, um, that anonymity when someone is in crisis that says, I don't feel like going on and have, um, you know, feeling that embrace of the people that are here that say, no, this is, this is a season, this is not a lifestyle, this is just something that we can like help get through. I've been there, um, I, I know what that's like, just keep pushing. So it's just a lost opportunity because the forum and that anonymity could be used in so many better ways than to put your personal grievance out there and, and bash people by name. It can be a good thing, but that's how most things are. If used appropriately, social media is great. It connects people, it can keep people in touch. It's just up to the people to uh, project the type of people that they are into those relationships. So social media can be great for connecting people, great for relationships, but just like any other relationship, it's only as genuine as what we say, do, or think. It's freedom of speech, and I understand that, but um, I just, Negativity just gets more negativity, and so, and so does positivity. It gets more positivity, and in, in a world where there is enough fighting against people, I just wish this was used in a way to support people instead.